France, a world power that has existed since the Middle Ages, a country that used to own 10% of the world. And when they saw their empire falling, they took to charge to keep it. Disclaimer before the video starts. In this video, I give my opinion and other people's opinion. Before speaking about how France could be an empire, we have to speak about France's decolonization process. When World War II ends, we see a whole movement of independence through the world. France fights to keep Vietnam, and fails miserably, France also fought the war in Algeria. France turned some old colonies, mostly islands, into overseas territories. And that's the first reason why it could be considered as an empire. Now, in these videos, I'd like to explain my opinion and other people's opinions. My opinion is that having overseas territories isn't really a reason to be an empire if these territories are okay with being part of the country. The French overseas territories are Guadalupe, Martinique, French Guyana, Réunion, Mayotte, Saint Pierre Miquelon, Saint Martin, Saint Barts, French Polynesia, New Caledonia, Wallace and Fortuna, Clip Journal Island. And before we continue in the video, I just really want to speak about Réunion, where France took 2,150 children from their home island. The forced relocation of the children from Réunion to France between 1963 and 1982 was driven by the French government policies aimed at addressing overpopulation, poverty and unemployment in Réunion Island. Families were often missiled to believe that sending their children to Metropolitan France would provide them with a better education and economic opportunities. I just wanted to quickly say that because I feel like it's quite an important topic. Anyway, let's go back to overseas territories. That the two important ones are French Polynesia and New Caledonia. These two territories, the UN considers that they still need to be decolonized. The United Nations Special Committee of Decolonization was created to make recommendations on territories that have not been decolonized yet they're still not fully self-governing. In the case of French Polynesia and New Caledonia, there have been calls for more autonomy, self-determination by some of the population in these territories. France and their respective territories have engaged in discussion and referendums to address the issue, but still they remain part of French overseas territories. Advocates argue that the people should have the right to determine their political status in the future free from external interference. This also means that the Eurozone isn't this, it's this, and the islands that are not visible on this map, because they're too tiny. Let's go back to the French decolonization process. Something I forgot to point out is that when a country, in specifically Africa, got independence, they had to sign a cooperation agreement with France. France would give them aid, and African countries had to give France the right of natural resource, allow them to maintain troops, and last, but definitely not least, keep the currency France had set. The franc of the financial community of Africa. The countries that would say no to the disagreement would be punished, like Guinea. That the president at the time, Seko, sorry if I say the name wrong, said that he preferred to be poor in freedom than rich in slavery. France then cut all world aid to them, printed a bunch of fake money to completely destroy their economy and many presidents of the new countries were French allies. They spoke French, they were friends with French elites. Since the 60s, France has had more than 50 wars with Africa. Oh, and in Gambon, they completely supported this guy, Omar Bongo. And Bongo, he was horrible. Because of his fault, Gambon was one of the countries with the biggest infant death rates. Even to this day, France has troops in Gambon to support Oman's son. 
And that's not only the dictator they supported, they also supported Jean Baden Bocasa. That, by the way, what is he wearing? This, but the point is that because of France, these countries are poor because of the CFA. The currency that France put in so many years ago. When the euro was going well, the CFA was going well. But, for example, in Senegal, this made it so the local farmers hired the prices and the farmers in Thailand had the prices lower, destroying the local farms. And because of this, there was no point of selling the rice outside of Senegal. It was too expensive compared to other countries' prices. The economy of these countries are getting worse. For example, Cameroon. The highest point of its economy was in the 80s. So France still owns these countries. It's actually called neocolonism, new colonism. France has control of these countries. And not only that, but France gets 85 of its former colonies' annual income. That's a lot. But France can do it. They technically can because of that signed agreement all those years ago. Only the face of colonialism has changed. The flags, the presidents. But France is still there. And you can see it very well. France can enter and grab any resource from this country. And even money. So, those are the reasons why France could be considered an empire. Now, in my opinion, the second one is the biggest reason. The first one, again, as I've already expressed, having overseas territories is not really a big reason to be an empire in the modern world. Except those two territories that the UN considers to be colonies. But the control in Africa is horrible. Because of France, many of these African countries are still very poor. And as I've said before, they supported Omar, a guy that because of him, his country had the biggest infant death rates. And Jean Badel was so concentrated on himself that his country was starving to death. Because of France. Because France wanted these countries.